Of course, one of the most notorious figures in all of human history is King Herod. From the innocent slaughtered and his attempt to kill the infant Jesus to his inviting people over to the palace for a swim with the singular intention of drowning them just for the fun of it, Herod's wickedness was beyond comprehension. The King Herod in this morning's story is not that guy, but rather his son who because of his part in this grisly death of John the Baptist, and also his part in handing over Jesus to Pilate during the trial, is really still considered by many to just be a chip off the old block. The Gospel, according to Mark, however, paints a momentarily sympathetic picture of King Herod. He seems to be saddened that he had to behead John the Baptist, and there is a hint that perhaps he was very glad that this Jesus he was now hearing of was actually John come back to life. Despite the fact that John was critical of Herod's marriage to his brother's wife, the king was still very interested and intrigued by what he had to say. And so when word was rising that there was this wonder worker walking among them all, a prophet, the thought that somehow John might have just survived his death really thrilled the guy. Maybe the dead did return to life. Maybe he could get a do-over with the one he had decapitated. Hold that thought in your mind for just a minute, I want to jump ahead now 2,000 years and tell you a story shared by our new presiding bishop-elect, Michael Curry, with those who were attending the General Convention in Salt Lake City. This was the last remark that he gave to us before the bishops went off to elect and the House of Deputies to concur on that election. I might parenthetically say, this guy has such great material, he's going to last me well into retirement. I'm very <laughs> thrilled we've got him. This is what he left us with. Bishop Curry told us that many, many years ago when he was rector of a parish in Baltimore, he was at a cemetery burying a young man who had been shot to death. This was one of several that he had buried. And just prior to the coffin being lowered into the ground, the pallbearers who were also young men and friends, the same age as the dead man, stood for just a little longer than usual, staying with the body that was suspended on that contraption above the grave. Bishop Curry then heard one of them say, while touching the coffin, I'll see you soon. Imagine that. I'll see you soon. And the bishop then told us, and these were his last remarks before the election, that was the day the ministry of Michael Curry changing. For apparently the only thing that represented the future in this young man's life was that he would be visiting someone soon in death. That was it. The gist of Bishop Curry's understanding of life was that there had to be something else for those who were living in distress. And if, in fact, King Herod was hoping to just rub shoulders with John the Baptist as he had known him, if that was the very best he could hope for, then how sad that must all be. And if a young man in Baltimore could only imagine joining his friend in death, could there really be anything more depressing for us? The Christian faith shatters the limitation of such meager expectations. Now, of course, who does not want to be united with those who have died? I am absolutely delighted at the prospect and the promise that I will once again see my parents and I'll see my dogs and I'll see all my friends who have, and here's an awkward word, predeceased me. And yes, who does not enjoy celebrating the fact that Jesus, the one who was laid in the tomb, did indeed walk on the earth until his ascension? And on some days, that really seems to be enough. It certainly is enough for me. So Herod's hope to see John again was very understandable. But the faith is not about just 
surviving the limitations of the bag of bones that we call the body naturally aging and then falling into decay. It is about bringing new life among the living and it's about bringing new life among the dead. It's about life change not ended and it's about the radical belief that we are not just called to exist but we're called to flourish. What a concept. As such, we've been summoned by God to look for resurrected life in one another, expecting to see that life then flow into places where decency and kindness and the whole concept of the future with God can displace this despondency that happens to be running rampant in our society. Our life in Christ is not limited to looking for someone who was once dead but is now alive, cool as that might be. As people who follow Jesus, our life in Christ is looking for places in which we, the living, breathing, vibrant body of Christ assembled here, can go with conviction that not only can we change the world, but that we will do just that, acting together. Being the vehicle which makes a difference is, after all, our business as usual. And that's what we do, day by day by day. One other thing about our story from Mark this morning. We have before us an account in which someone, in this case King Herod, is just trying to operate out of caution. To maintain the status quo, that being peace within his family and especially placating his wife, who is none too pleased with John the Baptist pointing out the error in their ways, he risked nothing, not a thing, in having John killed as a reward to his wife's daughter for her splendid dance. It was the safe way of dealing with a dilemma, and by doing so, he brought not new life, into his presence, but rather deep regret. We're called to be different. We're called to risk. Last Monday, a friend of mine sent me one of those emails with a nice storyline that's meant to inspire. And it said something to me about risking in order to bring into being new life. Now, we're going to have to check on the truthfulness uh, of this particular story with our our friends from Florida, the Wilsons, but this is what the storyline said. It seems that just outside a, flora, a forest in Florida, this 400 pound black bear wandered into the city, in which, in turn, that caused the fish and game people to tranquilize him for everybody's safety, but that's exactly when everything went wrong. The bear panicked and he headed for the inland waterway as the drug took increasing effect. And as Brother Bear began to go under, a wildlife worker by the name of Adam Warwick jumped into the water, made his way over to the sleepy bear, held his head above the waves, and then he dragged him to safety. And after joining others and using this front end loader to lift him into the back of a pickup truck, he jumped in beside the bear and rode with him for his trick back to the Osceola National Forest and ultimate release. Supposedly that's a true story. Well, we could dismiss that with the sarcastic smirk that, well, it must be true because after all, we saw it on the internet. <laughs> but it came with these marvelous pictures of this guy struggling with a bear in the waterway. They indicate that something extraordinary must have happened. And I really hope it did. Because sometimes when faced with trying to interject new life into an inner city that's racked with gun violence or change behavior by speaking truth to power that just might get your head handed to someone on a platter, that's where that expression comes from, you might realize that you are actually living a life with Jesus that can often feel like Lee, we are voluntarily running into the lake to grab a bear that's two and a half times our size and pull him to safety. But that's the ministry to which we've all been called.
And believe it or not, the saints in light are presiding bishop-elect, and then this guy by the name of Adam Warwick in Florida have seemed to figure out that there is life, real life, in trying to make such a choice. So with that in mind, this summer day, my suggestion to all of us is let's go raise the dead in spirit. Let's be prophetic to those who have lost hope. And if we get the chance, let's go drag a bear out of the water, which, while admittedly is a little harder than pulling a rabbit out of a hat, seems still well within our abilities if, if we choose to be fools for Christ. Amen.